So measure twice, cut once. I didn't show you this, but I used the level about five times to mark exactly where level was, and I scribed a line uh, all around it with the level in order to make an initial score line for the utility knife. And then I used the utility knife and really, really made a deep score. And then I used the sheetrock saw to cut through the uh, sheetrock. And on the other side of this wall was a shower in my master bathroom. So the last thing I wanted to do was use a sawzall and pop through that. So I was very careful. I used the sheetrock saw. So that's what I'm doing right now. And the next thing is I'm going to check uh, which outlet below that goes to which circuit breaker. All right, so there we are. First part done. All right, so I just plugged that in so I could see what uh, what breaker box I have, I have this thing. This actually works pretty well. It's my first time learns the panel, it says. this one second floor lights all right I'll shut that off when I'm going to the lights so here I'm just checking the power in the outlet just to make sure it is in fact off okay and it is off all right taking off the uh, the plate and then I'm going to test it again. I'll test, test two, three times. Test when you get to the wire. Test, test when you just to make sure that it is in fact dead. Sometimes there's power coming from other places. There's other wires, so you want to make completely sure that you don't electrocute yourself. That would kind of ruin your day. So now, unfortunately, both wires are being both the top and the bottom uh, parts of the outlet are, used, are being used. In other words, sometimes you get lucky and you have the, the outlets, the end point. The next thing I'm going to do is physically run the wire between the cutout I just made and the outlet a few feet below it. So here's the main idea. You want to go through the top, out into the box on the bottom because the box has a one way kind of to grab it one-way channel so what I did was I stuck my arm in the wall and I was able to push through with my finger through the one-way channel and I'm now gonna pull the Romex through and maybe I'll leave like maybe five or six inches sticking out and then I'm gonna cut the top so there's another five or six inches sticking out of the top right up there it says that thread it through here and then basically just make your connections and you're good to go. All right, so all I'm doing here is I'm just separating the three wires and I'm gonna cut off a little piece on the edge of each one. One. Yeah, otherwise known as stripping the wires. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. This fancy schmancy Three. stripper that works sometimes. Okay. That actually works really well. Same thing, I'm cutting this back now to leave maybe seven or eight inches sticking out. You don't want to cut it too short. You could always push the rest into the wall. That's probably sure that I needed it, but what's the difference? It worked out okay. Same thing, I'm just getting the uh, insulation off, and then I'm going to strip the last maybe half an inch off each wire. Just cutting them all to the same length. Next thing is to push the wires, all three, into the outlet box, which I'm doing right there. Again, it's one way. In the metal box, you have like a, a clamp that holds the wire, but in these boxes, it's just you could push it in, but you can't pull it out easily. That's the idea. So we just leave enough room so we can push everything back into the box. And then I'm going to install the outlet. Usually there's a hot wire, which is gold, 
a silver wire that's neutral and then the green that's ground. Unfortunately, in this El Cheapo setup, it, it was one piece. They had push connectors. So you just basically push in all three corresponding wires. Again, the, uh, the gold colored one or copper colored one goes to the hot, unless it's labeled otherwise, but that goes to hot, the neutral is the white hot. and the ground is of course green. Usually there's a there's screw, you pigtail it, you screw it on. That's what I'm doing there, I'm connecting it in. And then I'm just gonna connect the outlet to the box. And the outlet usually has a couple of uh, screws attached to it. So you just line it up with the screws in the box. If you have an electric drill driver, it makes much faster work of, of the whole process because they're usually about an inch long screws or longer. That's a pain. So we got everything hooked up, shoved in there. I usually give them a tug just to make sure. And now I'm screwing them in. By the way, best thing I ever got, that 12 volt Milwaukee <laughs> drill driver. I have a thousand cordless drills, but it's nice and small and it works really well. Just tightening the last bit by hand. Everything's plastic, you don't want to snap it. All right, so I'm just checking how it fits. Fits like it's supposed to, and it came with four screws. So just the, uh, the box gets screwed, like so, right onto, right onto the recessed box. And these, some, these recessed boxes are actually fairly important to have, because, especially if you're flat mounting the TV, like right against the wall, because the wire is definitely gonna show and hang down and, and be an issue. I didn't use one of my downstairs TV and I, I regret it. Right, once I tighten those all up, not gorilla tight, just normal tight. There we go. Last one. Now it's ready to go into the wall, actually. The instructions said to go box first at an angle and then just push it in. Very observant, you can see I switched screwdrivers. Of course, the stubby one is no good. Okay. So, when all four of them are nice and tight. Good enough. Good enough for this neighborhood. All right, there we go. All right. Home stretch. Home stretch, homie. All right, so. Just tightening these up. That's all I'm doing. This you don't want to over tighten them. They have little fingers that come out and grab the sheetrock from the back and pull it flush against the wall. So that's it. Again, these don't have to be crazy tight. So I, I'm going to use these little Wago connectors. It's good for like a three-way tap-in. All right, I'm just going to use the top, the ones coming in. I'm just making sure I have the correct wires. So let's do this. The top wires just and right here. snipping them. Again, you want to make sure the power's off. One. Or still off. Two. All right. Here's my stripper. Maybe now a little bit. It's not far enough. One. Two. Again, make sure you leave enough, enough length to work with this stuff. Right, here's nothing. I found those Wago connectors to be a pretty big waste of money because they're fairly expensive, but 
they're good to have around the house because I do use them. So in that regard, they're not a waste. If you're an electrician, probably not your thing. More often than not, I use just regular, regular wire nuts. Just speeding this up. All right, uh, connecting the hot to hot, the neutral to neutral, the ground to ground, and then shoving everything into the box carefully. As to not disconnect anything when you push it in. I've, I've never had an electrical box that's had enough room in it, ever. They do make a little tool to push everything in. I don't have it though. It's the only tool I don't have. There we go. Shove it in. Last thing is the hot wires. You know, you have the three, one from the new circuit, one and two from the old circuit. When I push everything to the box, I try to keep the, the hot and the neutral separate. Like I push the hot towards the top, the neutral towards the bottom, and the ground goes anywhere I can fit it. In case something comes off, they don't, they don't short themselves out. All right, I'm popping it. Turn the pedal back on and cross your fingers. All right, so now all I have to do is test it and make sure there's power in that. I'm going to pop the circuit back on and we'll see. Okay, I would like to test this with electricity trust, uh, this trace, this tester, but I can't because it's like a uh, what kind of outlet is it? It's, it's one of these uh, safety outlets. So let's shove this in and see. All right, it's working. I don't like these safety outlets. All right, it's working. I didn't mess it up too bad. <laughs> Let's try the top out and make sure the whole thing works. Okay. That's how you did electricity for one of these things. This is actually a short distance, but I made sure it was a heck of a lot easier if you're within the same stud as one of these. If you're not, and you have to bring the electricity across, it's a pain. It is a pain. You could either cut a really big hole like this and drill through the stud, but you have to make sure you don't go right near the edge. I think it's got to be like in the right directly in the middle. Uh, or you have to, if you notch it, you have to put a metal plate. 
So at that point, you'd have to remove the you'd have to remove the sheetrock, cut a little bit of a notch, put a metal plate, and then uh, tape and and uh, joint compound over it. Anyway, it's a lot more a lot more messy. Let's put it that way. But the reality is, behind the TV, doesn't really matter.